chops practice that I'm doing in order to figure out what I'm going to do with one second, one second of time over a three hour show. I'm sitting here toiling over what to do when in Metropolis, John Petrucci sort of glissandos and plays at the same time. I don't know what you would call that guitar move, but he goes, which does go with the four plus two fill on the record, but I'm not going to do that because um, I'm going to use that moment to kind of reflect what I'll call a golden nugget, meaning there are melodies and unison strewn throughout images and words, for example, and I'm going to use this drum set and my chops to, to really bring those out because it's, it's more of what I do, but it's without changing the essence of what is there, so what most people are used to because I'm concerned about that as well, and I am also concerned about what it sounds like in the audience. In other words, what I'm practicing there is could sound good with fast snare drums and kick drums. In other words, when the guitar goes, if I break that up into fast kick drums are pretty powerful. However, it might behoove me and it might sound better out in front if I was to, let's say, keep the beat going and use the octave of toms to go to descend from higher to a lower pitch like this. You know, and by the way, uh, I'm using the rods because, uh, firstly, those double strokes are not double strokes per se. Yes, they are two hits apiece, but I'm not hitting and bouncing. Those are two full-on hits, and I'm getting that by flexing my lap muscles really hard. You can't see it, but I'm really pulling down in order to get snap, snap, two separate hits instead of a hit and a bounce because it won't be powerful enough if I get a hit and a bounce. And then, you know, when I pick up the, these bad Larrys, the Wicked Pistons, I don't even have to try, you know. And what's interesting is I look kind of robotic when I play because I'm playing from this zone. But what's happening is, again, I'm using back muscles, um, all kinds of, even my stomach a little bit to flex it and pull down so that I am louder than it appears. Um, definitely when I see myself on DVD, it doesn't look like I'm hitting the drums at all. In fact, if I use the lighter sticks, I would probably, I would look like this because I would need to bring the stick way up high in order to get that kind of volume, which I can measure when I record. So I know exactly how much volume each of these techniques is getting. And um, believe me, it's louder than you think it is. You, you won't know until you come see it live and you're in the 10th row or something and then you go, oh, yeah. So, bottom line is that I'm, I'm choosing which move to do for this one second in the three hours. And I have like a list of these golden nuggets throughout images and words where I'm doing stuff like this and I'm toiling over, what should I do? Um, for example, if, if this was a speed metal band, I probably, who knows? You know, do that. I mean, because it fits the genre. Uh, or a really, really hard one, a really tough one would be to put the left foot in the in-betweens at that rate. Maybe to follow the guitar to do something like, or, or, so the, the, again, the left foot has to go on an upbeat, and it's really strange sounding. So that might be a clue to me not to do that. But it's nice to have the chops to be able to choose between these, these four things, either pure hands and pure feet, uh, double strokes, using the toms, maybe the, the more metal you know, approach either way, putting the right kick on the beat and the hands off, or the hands on the beat and the left kick drum in between. So, I thought it might, this is fun by the way. I know it sounds like kind of self-torture for one second of time, but um, I'm finding all kinds of moves like in learning to live. There's, there's a glissando, let's say there's a glissando. Again, it's, a, it's kind of a thing that the guitar is doing. And I'm toiling over using a 13 tuplet. It's in the solo section. So, that section near the end. But there's a So I might go. That's a 13 tuplet because I, 
I tried like eight notes in the space, it was slower, but it sounds too much like a rhythm. Because it's just going, so there's really no rhythm to that. You know what I mean? It's like suspended time. That's where these odd tuplets come in handy. handy excuse me. So again, we're talking about a half a second or one second of time that I'm putting all this thought into. And it's nice to have the chops to be able to make these choices. That's where all the practicing pays off. So, um, you know, there's a little peek into what's happening here with me and why it takes me time to really prepare these songs the way that I'm happy with. I, you know, I can just go out and look at it and read it and kind of play it, but it's, it's not, there's more to it than that. So that's the more to it. Images, words, and more. <laughs> All right, see ya.